In this lesson, we're going to start to cover how to build a reverse foot rig for uh, an IK setup on your leg. Um, this setup will give us a nice, uh, easy to animate foot control that allows the leg to slide back and forth across the floor with uh, the ball of the foot automatic rolling as it you know, runs out of length to stick to the ground. Um, the same kind of motion you get when you're running or walking how your foot pushes off the ground naturally, this rig will start to allow us to do. Um, and as well, we'll get some other controls we could lift up, stand on the toes, rock the foot back and forth, and, and so on. Um, so we're going to start off by building some IK handles here. And I'm going to go up to Skeleton. Uh, if you don't have a Skeleton rigged up, there is an example file here. Um, but this is assuming that you've already built your Skeleton um, and all your LRAs are oriented. But it is not skin weighted yet. So first step, I'm going to go up to Skeleton, IK Handle Tool. I'm going to go in the options because there's actually two kinds of uh, IK handles. The default setting is for IK SC Solver. Uh, SC stands for single chain and a single chain is from say hip to the knee or just from the knee to the ankle. It's, it's only one length. Um, Really, I don't ever use this at all. Even if I am doing a single length, I still use the other solver under here, which is RP. And RP stands for rotation plane. And let me let me build one of these out so you can see it real quick. I'm gonna hide my mesh. And all you see is this little green crosshair down here for the the IK handle. And it's just this line that goes up for the joint, and there's nothing else. And so. Uh, let's go ahead, I'm going to delete that and make an RP solver so you can see what the difference is. And I'm going to go all the way down from my hip to my ankle. And it's it's essentially the same thing. You'll see this cord kind of going up the back of the leg, like a tendon almost, while there's this green line going up through the leg. But up top, there is this little arrow now. And RP stands for rotation plane. Um, and what this does is it allows you to solve where the knee is pointing. Um, on an SC solver, you could start bending the leg and then the knee has no direction. It can point forward, it can decide, you know what, the best way to solve is I point off to the left or right in the right or 180 degrees backwards. Um, and that's not very easy to animate. Uh, some of you may have found the twist attribute on there, which allows you to uh, twist the leg. And you can, you can direct the knee that way, uh, but you don't have control of it. All, all you're doing is what happens, you'd move your leg if you're using an SC solver. You'd, you'd move your leg, it would get in some wonky position, and then you're counter animating the wonkiness with twist. Um, we just want to prevent the wonkiness from happening at all. We don't want to have to keep undoing it every time uh, it happens. Um, so uh, we're not going to use this twist. We're, we're going to uh, use this rotation plane up here, and we'll have it aim at something uh, later on so we can control the knee. Uh, but we'll do that a little bit later. That's the last step I tend to do after I build out the whole foot rig. Um, but just again, so skeleton, IK handle tool, go in the options. Don't use the SC solver. Make sure you're on the RP solver. And again, you'll know you're on the right one. If uh, me my outliner so I could find my handle. You know, if you see this little circle up top, if you don't see that, you've built the wrong one. Um, and you'll eventually find this out anyway if you don't do the right, right one because you'll start trying to control the direction of the knee and you, you won't be able to because you used an SC solver. Okay, so we're using SC solver and we're going to build two more. So built the first one from the hip to the ankle. And these last two are actually are going to be single chains. And I'm still using the RP solver. Uh, and the reason for that is even though uh, you know there's nothing to direct in between, these joints can still twist, and every now and then I'll build a rig and I, I don't constrain it to anything. Um, so it doesn't stay facing up, or let's look at that little wheel here. So like this wheel's facing down. Um, because I haven't told it to aim at anything yet, it'll kind of act like the SC solver does. It may decide, you know, the best way for me to solve is flip 180 degrees. Um, when your leg stays facing forward and your toes stays facing forward, but the middle of your foot flips 180 degrees, it looks really bad. Um, so sometimes I'll just put an invisible node somewhere in here to say, hey, here's what you aim at. 
um, don't don't look away from this thing so you don't do your weird flipping 180 degrees. Because um, in the rigs I, I have had it happen, there, there's not an easy way to undo it once it does. It just hits it in animation, and, and then once you open the scene again, it's just always like that for some reason. Um, so a pitfall, I, I don't have any files to show you that because it's not one of those things I know how to make happen. It just happens sometimes, and um, I know how to prevent it. That's all, that's all. I don't know how to undo it necessarily. Um, so okay, so we've built three IK handles, and so I'll name this first one. So name everything as you're going. I know I've skipped that in some of my other videos for the, the sake of time, but uh, do as I say, not as I'm doing always, because you know the video ends and then I go name everything. Um, so you don't have to watch me do this, but in this case I'm going to start naming the stuff. So left ankle IK. And again, this is just my naming convention. Uh, left side or right side, I'm building everything on the left side here. Uh, ankle to describe which part it is, and IK, and I tend to capitalize, you know, the suffix explaining what the kind of part it is, if it's a joint or if it's a group, um, or an IK handle. And again, this is just so I can easily browse through, you know, when I get, you know, thousands of things listed in here and I've built out a full rig, I can kind of tell what's what. Call this ball for the ball of the foot. And left toe. Okay. So, for those of you that don't know what a reverse foot rig is yet, let's look at the type of motion we're trying to get. So, you know, hopefully you can use your imagination since there isn't a model on here at this point. But if I grab all three of these IK handles, you can see as I drag the foot forward, it gives this nice toe point, the same way you would if you're trying to point your toe to the ground and drag your foot forward. Um, it tries to stick to the ground as long as it can, and then once it runs out of length, it has to go up into the air. Uh, same thing when we go back, the, the foot starts to roll, the toe uh, rolls off, and much like running, it, it, it kicks back. So this gets us some really nice motion for this. This is really easy to start doing walking, where we start to just whoops, lift it up, take a step forward, go down, rolls back as we get all the way down. This works better with the controller. Uh, and it's, it's uh, undoing itself as I'm doing this because the IK handles kind of reposition themselves. But once we get a control on here, this will be better. Um, but so it starts to give us that motion really, really nicely. And, and by the way, if you're testing this stuff out, which you you always should, uh, you know, move it around, make sure it's doing what you expect, but then undo. Uh, don't try to put it back. I see people doing that all the time. You, you know, you have this magical machine that can remember all your steps. Um, take full advantage of that so you, you aren't putting things in a slightly different position. Um, you know, as I'm building this, you know, we spend a lot of time orienting our LRA so everything here is zeroed out, and we could always zero it back out, um, especially when there's already rotations on your ankle. Um, let's, I may have moved too many things. So I'm just, I'm doing some steps. I'm going to make sure, okay, that's not there. That's not there. That is one problem when you're, you're testing stuff out a little bit too much. Um, it doesn't usually happen uh, when I'm building my own rigs, but when I'm demoing and start showing off a bunch of stuff that I usually wouldn't show while building it, um, that stuff tends to not always reset quite right. Um, so keep an eye on that as you're working. That's probably a good example there. I mean, I, Maya's pretty good at uh, figuring out how to get stuff back, but after my little spiel about using the magic undo button. Um, doesn't always work, so you have to keep an eye on it, but it's still better than you trying to eyeball it back. And once you put the IK handles on it, it's not great at, you, you can't just go in and necessarily zero this stuff out to get it back. All right, let's check this out again. That was a good thing we crossed that so we didn't end up with rotations in there. Um, a little bit about that too. We don't want rotations on here because of pitfalls we could hit later on. Um, once I skin this, uh, it's going to have something called on it a bind pose. And that's going to be the pose it wants to be in every time when you add something new on. So, like, this character has multiple outfits we could have. Um, and we say we decide we want to add a new piece of clothing or something like that. Um, you wouldn't be able to add it unless it's in the same bind pose. So having everything zeroed out, or, or be able to be zeroed out, um, makes it really useful to, you know, have a way to ensure you get that clothing on without... Uh, 
you know, having trying to figure out what position it was in. Because if he has, you know, 0.1 rotations on it, that's the bind pose, not 0, 0.1. And you have to know that that was on there. So, um, for the most part, it won't pick you up, but eventually you'll run into something that stops you because you didn't zero everything out. Um, okay, so we got that IK on there. So this this allows us to slide the foot back and forth pretty well. And actually, you know what? I'm going to save right here. Uh, so if that does do that again, as I'm showing you this stuff, I have something to revert to. So remember to save frequently. And, you know, you may be on a computer that just doesn't like Maya that much and it crashes all the time. So um, save frequently, save multiple copies. So, you, you know, you do screw something up, you have something to go back to, hopefully, where you didn't screw it up and had saved over your mistakes or anything like that. Um, so uh, we can slide this foot back and forth as a whole, but it's not particularly good for like if I want to roll onto the ball of my foot or stand up on my toe. If I start trying to move the IK handle to do just that, um, well, even if these stick, let's let's go ahead and uh, let's see if, if I just group them, will that get in the stick? Okay, now they're sticking. Um, as I try to like move this around, you can see it's the foot is swimming all over the place. So if I just want to roll the foot, well, I got to be really precise. And I couldn't just set two keyframes. I couldn't set it from here to up here because Maya is just going to choose the shortest path to animate that, and it's going to go in a straight line, and we're going to get that kind of motion. And so I'd have to set a bunch of keyframes to make it a nice arc. Um, well, you know it's a nice arc is the shape this is already in. So if I had a joint that went the other direction, so I could rotate this joint and it would move the psyche handle, that would keep it from swimming on the floor because it would keep it equidistance from here the whole time. Because what it's doing is, as I pull up, well, this joint can't, it isn't stretching to get to this point. It's got to stay the same distance away. So it's just trying to point to its IK handle the whole time. Um, but if I stay equidistance, it could stay right on its IK handle and we get a nice pivot. All right, so let me make sure... I haven't destroyed my foot position here. Close enough. Sometimes you'll see these negative zeros. It, it, it's fine. It's just a little glitch it gets when it's correcting, but those aren't actually numbers. Um, so what we want is, let me ungroup my IK handles here too that I grouped, is a way to be able to rotate those. So we had this same foot, but in the reverse direction, we'd have pivot points that I could rotate this joint here and it would keep that IK handle equidistance away so we could get a nice roll. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And, and rather than try to build it out again, I'm just going to duplicate this foot. So I'm hitting, I've got my ankle and I'm hitting Control D on my keyboard and that duplicates it. You can see, let me undo that one more time. So we have left ankle joint up here. It's right on top of itself so you're not going to see anything in your workspace. But if you look in here, you'll see a 1 get added and that's my duplicated uh, joint. You can also look down here in the script editor and it says result left ankle joint 1. Um, you know, if I yank it off, you can see it is uh, right there. So what I'm going to do is hit, uh, let's see, what is it? Uh, Shift P, and that's going to unparent. You see it drops down here. It's now separated from the rest of the leg. Again, I'm undoing each time I move stuff. And uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? So let's first, I'm going to go in here and uh, so I'm shift clicking this joint and it so if I if I just click let me close everything again. If I just click once on here, there's still multiple levels that I have to unfold. But if I shift click on this box, it unfolds everything at once and shows me. So let's look up here on the hip with, with everything on there. So if I click once I just get these few things that show up. But if I shift click, it opens up all those plus boxes. So uh, easier way to see things sometimes. Um, so when we made the IK handles on the original leg, it adds something called end effectors. They're, they're just little solvers that go onto that uh, leg to help them identify what the IK handles. Uh, when we duplicated over, we got duplicates of the end effectors too. These don't do anything. Um, they, they won't break your IK. They're just, you know, kind of ghosts from the, the copy we made. So we're just going to delete those. Um, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to start to differentiate what our rig is. Um, you know, so this is these are joints that are driving our skeleton uh, that's controlling our character. Um, but they won't get exported into our game. You know, they. This is the main thing. Mostly when it comes to game engines, I mean, you could probably get away with this on a film rig. Um, but also good to have these separate because uh, you may 
you may have multiple parts of rigs that you're swapping in and out and things like that. Uh, so at the end here, I'm just going to name this RIG for rig um, rather than joint to start to differentiate between those types of parts. But mostly it's, you know, for me, it's in games of making sure this doesn't go into the engine. This is the stuff that gets separate. So we want to make sure these don't get exported. And a lot of time the engines will actually look at different suffixes, uh, suffixes or uh, prefixes you've given things to decide whether they get exported or not. Um, so again, just another organization thing, good habit to be in. Um, so I've duplicated uh, just the foot. It's, it's on top of the other foot here again. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is turn my mesh back on real quick. And I'm going to, going to duplicate the toe. And I'm going to drag it back to the heel here. And especially looking kind of the, the end point of the heel. And I think that's probably good. I'm going to actually drag it out a little bit. So you'll notice my toe here is swimming out a little bit in front of the toes, which seems kind of odd. But um, this is a model that swaps out with all these other models and so it's kind of finding a happy medium with what all the other models are so again I'm going to do the same thing here with my heel and try to find what's a good happy medium between all the different models and, and again this is something pretty common when it comes to doing games of things are kind of approximations of things but a lot of the time you can't ever tell you know like I could tell when I'm zoomed up close like this but when you're seeing the character at full size like this You'll never notice the difference. So there's some things you get to fudge. Uh, so I'm going to take this duplicate joint I made, and instead of toe, I'm going to name it heel. And what this will do is give us a pivot point to rock the foot up and down uh, on the heel. It would be a pivot point for the heel. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide everything else but this foot rig. And uh, so I, I, let me undo that. So I'm doing that by just selecting left ankle, and if I hit Alt H, that will hide everything that isn't selected. If I hit Control H, that'll hide everything uh, ex except my selection. Or no, that'll hide my selection if I hit Control H. Sorry. Uh, if I hit Alt H, hides everything but uh, the selected object. So um, we're going to unparent everything so we can build it in the reverse order. So before everything was going down the chain, so this time we want all the arrows to point up the chain. And our heel will be the parent of this. So it, we'll start with actually the ankle. Ankle now gets parented under the ball. That's the opposite of the way it was before. Ball gets parented under the toe. And the toe gets parented under this new heel. And all these are our pivot points. We're, we're just making pivot points so, you know, if this is the ball of the foot, I could lift, I'm going to turn off my discrete rotate here again. I could lift up my foot as if I'm, you know, this is my ankle and I'm raising up and pivoting on the ball of my foot. Or I could lift up on my toe. Do this. And let's go back and I'm going to hit Control Shift H. That'll uh, re show everything that was last hidden. So whatever I last hid will bring that back. And let's see. And this is where it starts to get real important to be naming your stuff, because otherwise it gets real confusing of like which IK handle is which and which join is which. And I'm going to parent each of these IK handles, for the most part, under their corresponding named rig part. So ankle under the ankle rig, ball IK under the ball rig. And we're going to do some extra stuff with the toe here in a minute. So actually, rather than under the toe uh, rig, I'm going to parent it under the heel rig. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but we want some things like being able to tap the toe, and if it gets under the toe rig, we'll get a different pivot point. So uh, let's let's start to show you uh, what we've done now. So if I grab my rig, uh, so all the IK handles are parented under this new foot rig that we made. If I slide it back and forth, we get that same rocking that we did before, that nice slide. Uh, you know, we can start to lift the foot up. You know, get a really nice walk with this. Um, but also, if we start to rotate it now, now I can stand up on the ball of my foot. Now I can stand up on my toe. You know, so we get best of both worlds. We get inverse kinematics going one way, and with this reverse foot rig, we get forward kinematics going the other way. Uh, and we just piggybacked one rig onto the other. So we piggybacked our IK rig onto our FK rig, and we've gotten the best of both worlds, at least when it comes to uh, you know moving the foot. Um, but we get you know, 
a nice bend out of the knee from doing this. We don't have to worry about that. Um, so that's the benefit of this rig. And so we're still going to do a little bit more to this so we, we get some control over this. Um, the rule of building rigs is uh, whatever you give your animators, don't let them touch anything you don't expect them to break because they will break it somehow. Um, and it's not their fault. They don't know how this stuff works. A lot of time animators just know how to animate. They don't know how to rig. They don't really know that you can't you know, pull the IK handles out of the skeleton and start keyframing them after you keyframe the control and keyframe the skeleton that's being driven by other stuff. Um, they may not even realize they're doing that. They just grab the first thing they see that they can move and start keying it and have no idea what they've gotten a hold of. Um, so ultimately, rather than animating this rig, we're going to set up controls that drive these different parts. So I'll, I'll have a spline control that, you know, when I slide a slider back and, back and forth, it does rotate Z. Um, so that's how we'll start to stall solve this stuff. Um, so let's let's start to add from what. So we have ball rolling, we have the toe going up and down, um, but we want to be able to twist on the toe too. We want to be able to do both at the same time. So right now let's do this through uh, our channel box because this is the same way it'll be driven when we use our control. If I do side to side, great that's Z. If I do up and down, that's great. But now what happens when I combine them? Oh, actually, you know, we're actually okay. We don't have to change the rotation order there. Uh, depending on how your rig set up, sometimes you do, and you'll rotate this in Z, and Y will be going uh, wonky side to side, but we're actually good. Don't have to worry about it. So just things to watch. If, if yours was rotating as if... Um, let's make something here real quick. I'll make a cone. Oh, I got my polygons hidden, so you can't see it. But let's say that's your toe, and you lifted that up like this, and then you started twisting, and it's it's twisting that way, rather than a nice twist on the ground, like flatten the ground as if you're stomping like a cigarette out or something like that. It's the best example I can think of. Um, then you would go into change your. Uh, I'm hitting Control A and bringing open the uh, attribute editor for this joint. You would change your rotation order if that's the case, but it looks like we're all right with this rotation order. And if you're not sure about rotation order, again, go look at the video on rotation order. But, you know, it looks like I could raise this foot up and I could still rotate Z without any issues. So, um, those are those two. So, uh, let's see. Bring back up my, uh, Outline here. So we want to think about what other pivot points do we want. So we could we could pivot from the heel right now, so that's great. We could rock back and forth. Let's check that one actually. Can we do both? So Z. Yep, that's good. That's sticking to the ground rather than you know the example is if it was rotating like X. Like well, that's not quite right. Um, but that looks good. Um, let's see. Can we tap the toe? We can't tap the toe yet. So what we're gonna do, and this is why we parented the toe under the heel. And what I mean, tap the toe is raise the toe up and down without rocking the rest of the foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a group to do that. And I've parented the toe under the heel, so I'm just going to hit Control G. Well, with the IK handle selected, and that adds a group node. And what I'm going to do here, and let me go ahead and hide my polygons again. I'm going to hold down D, the D key on my keyboard, and that allows me to move the pivot point. Once it switches into that mode, I'm also going to hold down the V key. So D is in dog. V is in van or vegetable. Um, that allows me to point snap, so it's toggling on my point snap. I'm going to point snap it to uh, the ball of the foot. Um, by parenting under the heel, the group is automatically oriented the same direction as the heel when I parented the, the toe IK under there. So we made it, it by default was parented, or, or oriented the same direction as the heel. Uh, and when it's made, it's parented under there because the, the toe IK was already under there. Um, now I can use Z and we can now tap the toe without moving the rest of the foot. So I'm going to name this uh, left toe tap I'm using camel case to differentiate the different words. So using a capital letter in between each word. And um, we'll call this a just a group. GRP is what I use for group. Um, Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to call this a rig because it's actually driving something. 
it's not it's not a joint, but it's still driving uh, one of these things. It, you know, we could use a joint for this, but there's no need to. Um, so let's see, what else do we need? Um, so we want to be able to pivot on the ball of the foot. We want to be able to rock back and forth there. So we need a node for that. So let's see, how am I going to do this? I'll duplicate the whole heel here. So I'm going to duplicate the heel. I'm just going to delete everything under it. And then call this ball twist. And so we need this for the ball because the toe can twist back and forth, and it's supposed to take the whole foot. And the heel can twist back and forth, and that takes the whole foot. But if we start twisting the ball, that's only going to take half the foot. That's, that's a very broken foot again. We do not want that. We want it to take the whole thing, but we need a pivot point there. So I'm going to go ahead and point snap this back to the ball of the foot. And we're going to parent the whole heel rig under there. And now, if we twist from there, we now have a pivot point from the ball of the foot that takes the whole foot. And the one other thing I can think of that I want is I want to be able to rock side to side on my foot. Um, so this one's a little bit more eyeball-y. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and actually duplicate that ball twist joining in, delete everything under it. So it's just, I just want the one joint. Um, and we're going to duplicate it twice. And I'm going to pull, I'm going to go ahead and pull them both back a little bit just so I get a better view. But it's, it's only going to be rotating a one axis. So let me, let me show you what I'm doing first before I explain too much more. So I'm going to pull one off here to the left and one off to the right. And I'm going to reorient these LRAs because I want this Y axis to be kind of perpendicular to the side of the foot. Because that's, that's where it's going to rock from. So I think I'm happy with that. And again, just eyeballing this is, doesn't have to be perfect. It has to just be close enough. Um, and also, I can hit my plus and minus sign on my keyboard to make this gimbal uh, bigger or smaller. And this way I could kind of, again, visually line up with this a little bit better. I'm going to pull this joint out just a little bit more. Oh, whoops, I got my... Okay, I think that's good. Uh, this will get me rocking on that side and then rocking on that side. So I'm going to name these... Um, let's see. Left... Which, uh, let's see, let's call this a, a roll. So consistent with my name convention, I don't seem to capitalize the first letter in this case. So foot roll, uh, and which direction? I'll call this out. So it's rolling out, outside the body. And this one is foot roll in. So it's rolling towards the inside of the body. And I'm going to parent one of these under the other. It doesn't really matter which way. Just whenever you make the other side of this rig, uh, do it the same way. And let's see. Uh, then I'm going to parent the ball, uh, the rest of our foot rig under it. So all we're doing is we're adding pivot points as we're going. So the last one we added was... Uh, let's see. I'm pick walking... What did I do? Oh, I didn't parent this under the other one. So there we go. So we, we keep in this chain hierarchy here of, you know, so we just added this ball pivot point, which pivots the whole thing. And now we've added one that allows us, when we rotate an X, to roll up on this side of the foot and on this side, on that side of the foot. So we're rolling uh, on that side. So we're just giving ourselves different options for ways to pivot the foot. Uh, in ways that wouldn't be particularly easy otherwise. Because we just had uh, this ball, the, the center point, as one. Well, it'll roll up on the side of the foot. Well, now the foot's going through the ground, so now I have to, have to raise it up a little bit. Um, we don't want to have to deal with that. You know, just adding these extra pivot points, you know, helps us give, give us easy controls to start to control this stuff. So, let's see. Uh, so I think, I think that's most of the the controls we want. Um, so I've already made a NURBS control, so if you haven't watched the video on uh, how to make spline controls, go back and watch that. Um, 
and oh, you know, this is me being slightly obsessive compulsive, but I'm going to go ahead and point snap that back. Looks like the other side was like that too. Okay, so these are just two boxes I traced with splines. I group them, um, and it's originally at the origin, so I'll go, go ahead and do this back. So it's back here at first. Uh, this is how I make it. And then I group it. And the reason I group it is so I can move the group and position it however I want. So the group, you know, you see it has translation uh, and rotation on it. And, and much like our joints, we always want to be able to zero back out our controls because these are the things that are going to be driving our joints, and we always want our joints to be able to be zeroed out. So if I can't zero out my controls uh, without having to remember a bunch of numbers on them, that's not particularly helpful, especially when we get to the scenario of I want to add a mesh back on again. Um, so I always group my control. I'll move the group. It, it could take whatever numbers. It, it, it could be translated. It could be rotated. We don't have the freeze transformations on it. Um, the reason we don't want our freeze transformations on it, because once we start to rotate it, it starts to orient, uh, orient our gimbal. So this one has rotation on it. So you know Z faces this way now rather than facing straight forward, which is what we want because it's lined up with our foot. Um, so the control is zeroed out, and the foot's uh, the, the group is lined up, pointing in the same direction as the rest of the foot. Um, there's some tricks to do that. I, I used an orient constraint and then deleted it uh, to get the foot in that position. Uh, you know, grabbing one of these points down here on the ball just so it's pointing in the same direction. Um, there's various ways to to do that, but you could even eyeball it. It's not super important in this case. Uh, but we'll talk about some of those methods more as we go up into the the arm and uh, other parts of the body. Um, so, okay, so we have this control and we want it to drive uh, this foot rig. Um, we need uh, some way to have this follow this control because, we, again, we don't want to animate these joints. But I can't just parent constrain it to this uh, control. And I'm not going to parent it because I, I want to always keep the control separate from the rig. Uh, the, this spline control is what the animator is going to work with. Um, I want the rig somewhere else here. Like, it just they never even get to see it. Um, so I don't want to parent it under there because they could accidentally pick walk down and start to work with the rig unknowingly. Um, so I'm always going to use a parent constraint or something along those lines to drive uh, my my rig with my control. Um, so if I use a parent constraint, the problem is, right off the bat, I won't be able to rotate this anymore because it's being driven by a parent constraint now. So instead, what I'm going to do is uh, group it, but uh, because I want to be a little bit you know, retentive in this case, I'm going to duplicate the group that I made for my control, delete it, and I'm going to call this foot rig CT group. And CT group stands for control group, so usually it's you always see it above a control. Um, and I'm going to parent this rig under here. And the reason I duplicate um, the foot controls uh, rigs is the foot control and the foot control group have the same pivot point. They're both oriented the same way. Um, I'm going to parent constrain this group to follow this uh, control. And if they're lined up exactly the same, that's going to end up in the best math for the orient constraint. Uh, occasionally, when when things are in two completely different positions, th there's little times where the orient constraint will freak out and it'll have to say, you know what, the closest distance was you know clockwise before, and we got up to 180 degrees, and now I'm deciding, you know, what, the best math was to go the other direction. So we've gotten positive numbers, but now the best best math is to go to negative, and for like two frames, it'll spin around 180 degrees to go the direction it wants uh, because it's translating one set of values into another. But if we start with the same values, uh, we tend not to get any glitches. So that's why I duplicate this this group here. So we have the exact same pivot point between the two. So I'm going to grab the foot control. I'm going to grab the foot rig group that we made. Do constrain parent. And I see that parent constraint added under my foot control. I can tell it's added here because everything turns blue. This means it's being controlled by something now. Um, you'll, you'll see all sorts of different colors. So blue tends to mean uh, constraints, uh, red for keyframes, 
uh, yellow for direct connections. We'll, we'll get into this more, but the, the color will start to help you identify what's being controlled and by what. Uh, so just something to keep an eye on. Uh, so now if I move my control, it's moving my rig all nice. And because my rig isn't parented under my uh, control, I can just hide, whoops, wrong button, I can just hide this. And now the animators would never see that. And I'll eventually hide my skeleton too and also left with the control and they can see the mesh moving. Um, but that's the idea of it. So the last part we got to do with this particular control, I'm going to unhide that, is actually start to make uh, attributes that start to drive this rig that we made so again the animators aren't touching it. So uh, I'm going to have to select both of these at the same time so I'm adding them. Uh, I'll add them to each but I'll only have to do it once. So I'm going up to modify, add it, attribute, and I'm just going to start rolling th through them. So let's see we have uh, to tap, to roll, and to twist. And then we had ball roll, so that's the foot lifting up. And, and you'll see these in a second, this is just me naming them. Uh, by the way, I'm using a float, and I'm not sending a min-max in this case. Uh, a lot of people like to send a min-max so you can't break the foot. Uh, I'm of the mind that there's times where you want to break your rig, just sometimes just for a frame, but the extreme motion you know, is enough for the eye to, you know, give some squash and stretch to it. Um, and so sometimes there's just for a frame or two you really want to break the rig. You'll never see it in motion, but it adds a nice visual effect to it. So, you know, I let the animators figure it out. And if they're really horrible, then I'll come back and lock their rig out so they can't do that. But most of the time it's fine. Uh, again, I'm using camel case in here, and you'll notice as I add this, I'm not putting spaces in. It doesn't want spaces in here, but if I use camel case, it'll put spaces in here. I could also use uh, underscores to tell it to put spaces in over here. Uh, and I'm using a float, and that'll be a 1 to 0, or, or you know, any number from 1 to 10 to 1,000 with decimal points in it. So, um, so we can get, you know, a little bit finer control as we're uh, rolling things. Okay, so we have ball twist. Okay, I think that's it for the ball. We have uh, heel twist. Or let me do it in the same order that I've been doing them. So heel roll. And heel twist. You, you notice uh, also I don't capitalize the first letter. That's often, uh, I try not to because uh, Maya will automatically capitalize the first letter in here. Uh, and I just, that's the way I'm consistent because I don't want to have to guess uh, when I'm searching for a name. Is like, did, is that one capitalized or not capitalized? So I just across the board don't capitalize the first letter. So heel twist. I think that's, I think that's all that we need for the heel. And then uh, we're going to do the foot rolling left and right. And that'll be one attribute that controls both directions. And we'll get into that in a minute here. So uh, let's see. Uh, call that foot roll. No, foot. So we used to roll for the other one. What did I name this rig? No, I used it roll also. We'll call it... Um, Foot banking, so banking like a plane, not not money related. Okay, bank left, bank right. So okay, so we have attributes now, but they don't they don't do anything yet. And we'll start to play more with the, what I was talking about with the colors of things. So I'm gonna go into uh, window up here, general editors and connection editor. And from here, I can start to uh, make connections that will say, this number over here drives this number over here. It's they're the same number. Plug this number into this number. So by default, I've got uh, the foot control loaded in outputs because I had it selected. Uh, if you don't have anything selected, you can open up this window, select your object, and click reload left or re reload right. Um, and this is from and to. So we're saying, take the data from the foot control and plug it into whatever part we're about to select. And so I'm going to go in here. Let's open up my outliner so you can see both versions. Let's start with uh, let's start with the ball rig. And I'm going to reload this on the the right side. 
So I'm going to take the data from the foot control and plug it into the left ball rig. So I'm going to scroll down here until I find the attributes that I made. And uh, now I'm going to go and find the rotation of this ball rig. And it's in here somewhere. There it is. Okay. So you notice this little plus sign beside it. I'm going to unfold this. And now we have rotate X, Y, Z. And so I'm going to back in my workspace. So I'm right clicking in here and hitting R or uh, E so I can see my rotation tool. It looks like we want the Z axis to, for roll. So ball roll. We're going to hook it up to rotate Z. And let's test it out. There we go. So when we scrub this, so those of you that don't know this, I can select my control. I can click on the name. Don't click on the number. Click on the name. And now I can middle mouse drag on my workspace back and forth. Whoops, if I grab one that's actually hooked up to start to drive that number back and forth. So it's a little bit easier than typing things in and, and playing with it. It's a, a squirrel wheel. Um, so again, just select the name, middle mouse drag in your workspace. Uh, if you click somewhere off in here, not going to do it. So it's going to be in this, this area here. Okay, so we're just going to go through and start doing this for all of them. So um, let's see, toe tap. Let's get that one. Find my toe tap rig that I made. It's toe, toe tap. There we go. That one seems to also be rotate Z. Let me try to center this better so you can see it as I'm doing it. So reload my right side. Unfold, rotate. And the reason this is grayed out is because this is a single uh, attribute that's going there. And this is, if I was, if I had something that had three, like a you know, vector point or something like that, three points in space, then I can plug it into rotate as a whole. But because there's only one value, I have to open it up before I can select rotate, which is what we want anyway. So rotate Z, and I'm going to start flying through these, and then we'll test them all out and see if I, I messed any up. Um, I could tell I've hooked something up to uh, already once it's italicized. So you see once I connect these, they're italicized, so I know I haven't done toe roll yet. So I have to go find my toe rig and reload the right side. Rotate, and that one is for to roll, looks like a rotate Y. Yep. And toe twist is rotate Z. That's the one kind of lined up with the floor. Ball twist, i got to find my ball twist rig. There it is, that's the one we made that was under the heel, and then we moved it back to the ball. Uh, and reload right. And that one looks like Z for twisting. Load up the heel rig here. So rolling looks like Y. And twist looks like Z again. Now the foot banking we're going to have a slightly different setup, but I'll get to that in a second. Let's test the rest of these out first. So make sure I hook these all up right. So toe tap. Yep, that looks like a toe tapping. Yep, and we can stand up on the toe. Yep, the whole foot's coming, and we're twisting, pivoting from the toe. Ball roll. Ball twist. Yep, rolling up on the heel, and twisting from the heel. And when you have two of these, you should test them together. So I could roll up and do the heel twist. Yep, that looks like the right kind of motion. So you roll up on my toe, do a toe twist. Yep, that looks fine. And this should work just fine because it's two separate joints. Okay, so the last one we have is rocking side to side. And what we want to do is have this one attribute control both sides. So when we're going positive, it's rotating this side, and when we're going negative, it's rotating this side. Because um, so, what we want is it to do this, and then once you hit, go back and you hit zero, it's now doing the other side. Uh, so we can do this with what is called a condition node. So uh, go ahead and save this. And I'm going to open up, uh, go to Window, Hypergraph Connections. And let's see, let's, let's go ahead and grab those two joints. So foot roll in, foot roll out. And actually, I'm going to, so I've in my outline area, I control selected both of those so I could grab two at the same time. And now my workspace, I'm going to shift click the foot control so I also get it. 
And you'll notice it starts to show what's actually connected to it in here. And if I mouse over any of these little bars, I don't know why it's showing up down there, but um, you know, it starts to show me what's connected to what. Um, but if I go back a second, what I graphed, uh, what I had selected will show up in yellow. So these are the only ones I'm really worried about at this point. Or not worried about, but at least interested in. Um, so I'm going to go uh, and make a new rendering node. Uh, so I can go up to rendering and create render node. And I'm going to give Maya a second as it wakes up. And uh, some of you may recognize this. This is the same node creation uh, menu that shows up in the hypershade when you're making textures. Um, and a lot of the texture nodes you can actually use for rigging stuff. Um, what we're interested in is mostly utility nodes. So I'm going to come through here and look for the node that is right in front of my face, but maybe it's not listed here. So I'm going to go back to Maya and I'm going to just scroll down. So Maya, th this is the list of all these things. Um, I'm looking for a specific one. Um, condition, there we go. So I'm going to make, I think I need two. So we'll start with one. And I'm going to select this condition node, bring up my uh, attribute editor, so hitting Control A with it selected. And let's see. So uh, let me see if I remember how to use this right. So we have uh, first term and second term here. And we have operations uh, equal. So uh, what we want to change this to is uh, I think we want uh, greater than for this. And uh, let's see. So we're going to take, uh, bring back open our connection editor, and I'm going to, I'm going to name these conditions so I could actually remember which one's which. So uh, left uh, foot roll, let's say uh, out underscore condition. Okay, and actually I'm going to copy that name, name my other one. Actually, you know, I think we only need one. Let's that when I whenever I delete something, it uh, rearranges everything. So, okay. So, our condition node. I'm gonna load this up and reload right, and load our foot control up inside. So I'm gonna say foot banking is the first term. And so that's going to take whatever number from foot banking is in there as we scroll up and down and plug it into uh, the first term here. And what we're saying right now is if, I believe if I haven't got this backwards, I may have to switch first term and second term, but uh, if first term is greater than zero, we'll rotate one of these. If it's less than zero, we'll rotate the other one. So, um, Let's go ahead and let's see. Uh, and I th actually, what I think we want is we want to actually plug uh, the rotations in for color of true and color of false. And rather than color, we're going to say th think of this as just X Y Z instead of R G B. Um, so I'm going to go actually back in here and go and see which axis we need. We need X, so we'll think of that as the first one. So instead of RGB again, XYZ. Um, plug that in the first term and plug that in the second term. And, you know, no, I will need to because I need it to be zero otherwise. So I'm going to reload that. And so color of true. Okay, color false, not. Okay, so color false should be zero. I'm just gonna turn these all to zero just for the heck of it. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is plug in the output of this now. So I'm gonna turn this over to the from side and plug it into, use the out color from R, reload that joint, find the rotation, and plug it into rotate x. What I'm going to do is duplicate uh, this node because prematurely deleted the, the other one. So now I've got a second one. I'll have one in the name. I'm going to rename this to uh, roll in and the other one is 
that's right there. I'm going to name that rollout. Okay. So I'm going to hook up the same things again. So uh, load this back up as the input. I'll grab the output from foot banking. That is the first term. If the condition's true, then we get the rotations from it plugging into the joint. If not, it reads a zero. So the one thing we're going to do different here is rather than this one, so the first one was greater than, so this one we want to be less than. So when it goes below zero, it's now rotating the other one, and then the other one sits at zero. Uh, and reason we get zero because it's not until it hits zero that it then switches from one to the other. So it just says once you hit zero, stay there. Um, so we're going to grab our foot roll in and grab our other joint for our foot roll. The out color R is our rotate color or uh, rotate X. So let's test this out and see if that worked now. So kind of, except one's going the wrong way. So, or no, they're both going the wrong way. So we need to reverse those numbers. Uh, so we're getting the right kind of value. So um, not a problem. Happens pretty often. We just need to tell it to put out the opposite value. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another node for this. So just a little bit more math. And here we go. Multiply, divide. And again, I'm going to make two of those. And we're going to use the multiply function in this rather than the divide. So again, left foot roll in. And I'm going to name my other one a foot roll out. OK. And what we're going to do is uh, first input is going to be what's coming out from the condition node. Second input is going to be negative 1. And this way we'll reverse the direction. So if it's negative, it becomes positive. If it's positive, it becomes negative. Um, and we'll just do this for both condition nodes. So here's the first one. Going back to our connection editor. So taking the condition, so we're taking the output from the condition. Instead of putting it directly into the joint, we're going to run it through this multiply divide node, which is going to multiply it by negative one to reverse it. So I grabbed the wrong node. Where's my condition node? There they are. Okay. So this is roll in. Left. And to roll in. We're taking the out color. We put 1 as x. That's saying whatever this value is times negative 1. Then we'll take the output here and plug it into. The roll in. Okay, and we'll do the same thing for the other one. So I've got my roll out and roll out, and my condition node and my multiply node. Taking the out color from this, putting it into input 1x, and then loading this as the output of this guy. Okay, and let's test this out now and see if everything's going the right way. That's more like it. So you can see it's one uh, it's one attribute driving two directions. So when we're greater than, it's saying drive this one. And we're going outside, and then we go down and down and down as we hit zero. Now it's less than zero, and now the other one stays, at, this side stays at zero. And this side starts rotating. So we get this nice rocking back and forth motion with one control. So that's everything for a foot. Um, the last thing we have to do is we got our foot working, but we still don't have anything controlling the knee. Um, so the trick with the knee is we, we could tell that little, let's hide my polygons again, get back to um, that RP solver that we were originally talking about. We need that little plane. Uh, we could tell it to always point to this control. But again, we got our dilemma of we always want everything zeroed out on this rig. So 
we don't want it rotating the rig to point at wherever this is. We want this control to start out pointing out exactly where that little arrow is pointing at. And this isn't something to eyeball, this is something to try and measure. And um, Way back when I devised a little trick to figure this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some other joints to build a guide to show us where to place that control. So I'm going to get a skeleton joint tool and I'm going to hold V and I'm, I'm clicking down not on top of any joints. I'm out here way out in space. And as long as I keep holding down you see as I drag and move around uh, it'll snap. I'm holding V right now. Um, it'll uh, snap to whatever the closest thing it is. The reason I do that way out here is because I don't want to start clicking on a joint because it may start trying to build off that existing joint. So if I click directly on the ankle, it might start building off the ankle or a reverse foot rig, and I don't want that. So just really easy. Just Again, I'm going to hold V. I've already built that. I'm going to actually delete that. So holding down V for point snap, toggle on and off, clicking out here and just dragging until I see it snap to the ankle. And I'm going to do the same. Again, while it's still active, snap to the knee. So we've got this chain. The reason I do that is once I build that, uh, it auto orients so that X is facing towards uh, its child joint. I'm going to pick walk down because that's the easy way to select that joint. Again, grabbing the one that's the new one that's on the knee, and I'm going to change my translation mode. So I'm going to change it from object to local. So this transformation gibbles oriented the same way parent joint is, because the parent joint auto-oriented to face the child, that means X is facing up that way. That's the direction I want to pull it. I'm not going to be worried about the numbers here so much. Um, so I'm going to hold down D again, and only an X. So I'm grabbing X. Remember, it turns yellow. That means I'm only working with the X axis. Uh, holding down V to point snap, and I'm point snapping up to the hip. And it'll get as close as it can. Depending on how bent your knee is, it may still be down here or something like that. That's fine. Just point snap and X, wherever it ends up, that's where you want it to be. Uh, you don't have to try to eyeball it up here or anything like that. Just, you know, it may end up down here, it may end up higher, it's usually lower. But wherever it ends up, point snapping, that is fine. Um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, point snap from, or not point snap, so, well, I'm, I'm holding down V to point snap again, but I'm building another joint chain. So, holding down V, clicking off in space, moving my mouse around until it snaps where I want, let go. Do the same thing until it clicks and snaps to that new joint that we just made that we snapped up by the hip. And this is now our guide for where that needs to aim. So we could we could move this. We could either build this off the hip or we could build it off the knee. And I tend to like it down by the knee. So I'm just grabbing this new chain we made. Again, I'm holding V to point snap and I'm middle mouse dragging down uh, to the knee so it point snaps to the knee. And I could drag this out farther too. So again, if I'm in local mode, I don't want to be an object, I don't want to be in world. I want to be in local mode so it's oriented the same way as its parent. And I could pull this out as far as I want. So I'm going to turn on my mesh here and just go, yep, you know, especially if you got a big bulky mesh, you want to make sure your control stays nice and outside uh, the model. But I'm going to call that a good spot. And again, I've made my control, I grouped it. So I'm pick walking up here. Let's open up my outliner. Um, so there's my knee control. Here's the group for it. So again, I'm not moving the knee control. I'm not moving the spline. I'm moving the group. And that way the group takes on whatever numbers it needs to, but I could always zero back out the control. So if this worked right, um, we shouldn't need these guides anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those. They were just temporary. I can grab the IK handle for, um, I'm going to hide my polygons again so we can actually see it, IK handle for my ankle, and actually I need this reverser. I need to select the thing that it's going to be constrained to first, and then the thing I'm constraining. So, uh, so grab my control after I've placed it, grab my ankle IK, and we shouldn't see the leg move when I add this. If we do, uh, then I did something wrong. So you can go up to skin or not, sorry, not skin, uh, constrain, uh, pull vector, uh, and this will constrain that pull vector to aim towards this control. So I get my mouse over it, and then I actually look at this leg to make sure it doesn't budge when I add this. And that looked good. This little thing shows up, but, yep, I still don't have any rotations on my leg, so it, that worked right. So 
now I have a pull vector for my knee. So wherever this thing aims, my knee aims at it. Uh, however my foot is solving, it's always aiming towards this control. And in this control, you eventually either have follow the hips or follow the foot. And it's just kind of a preference of the animator. Uh, that's a way to kind of keep it in place. Um, now, now for the bad news. So you've done the whole left side now. Uh, unlike mirroring joints, you can't really mirror controls. Um, th there is a little trick that I do. So actually, let me delete this one. And this should get the other side in the same place. So what I could do to make my, my right side knee control, and this is the same thing I did for my foot control, is what I'll do is I'll group it. And I will set the scale, or I'll, I'm sorry, I'll group it, I'll duplicate it, and then this duplicate group, I'll set the scale to negative 1x. And that mirrors it across to the other side, and it should be the exact same place since the skeleton was mirrored from this side. We built everything right across the center line. Um, we should be fine for this. We shouldn't have to measure this one. We should just be able to add the IK handle, and it should be okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is ungroup these, because these groups are temporary. And I'm going to rename this other side from left to right. So I'm changing the LF to RT. And unparenting it from that temporary group that I made. And that should be set up for the most part. The one thing I want to do is get rid of this negative scale, though. So I'm going to go up to Modify, Freeze Transformations. And rather than doing the default, I'm going to go to the Options and turn off everything but scale. And that way it just resets the scale, but everything is, is set up right. Well, not quite. I need to undo the rotations too, it looks like. And in this case, I could do that because I'm not worried about the rotations. Let me sure that's right for the foot too. Oh, that's not quite right for the foot, but I'll have to figure that part out. Um, a lot of time what I do is I just make the same control again, and let's see. Do I just need to see if I duplicate this one? Oops. See, and I don't even remember all this stuff all the time. I'm I'm always stumbling through stuff like, how, how did I do this last time? Um, so don't feel bad, especially if this is your first time doing this stuff if you don't get it. So in this case, the mirror trick doesn't work for this one. So it does for things where I'm only worried about translating it, but this, since this is off in an angle, uh, I forgot that doesn't work for this. But here's my foot control. I want one for the other side. Uh, I think I already built it, actually. But do it again. So foot control, I'm going to duplicate it. It's rotated 13.045 degrees to face that direction. I'm just going to turn that from positive to negative. Uh, I built my foot control symmetrical, so when it's straightforward, you know, the left side's the same as the right side. If I point snap it over, that should be right. That should be what I'm looking for. And you see that Z's facing off the same way there. And again, I'll rename this one. And I, I have to go back and build all that rig stuff again. Um, you may be able to mirror the, the, the foot rig. Um, oops. Can't talk and name things at the same time. Um, but you'll still have to build all the IK handles again. Uh, you'll have to put in those groups. You'll have to make the connections again. So you always have to do that stuff twice. Once for the left side, once for the right. Um, that's probably why we name things. That's why we try to be consistent as we do everything so that we can follow the same steps as we do them over and over. Um, but I'll leave you here with the, the left side done. It's essentially the same thing for the right. You know, if, if you're not sure, watch the video again and just instead of naming everything LF underscore, name it RT underscore. Um, and it's the same idea. Um, you do want to try to be consistent in, in positioning things, so you could always look at the numbers of things. We could let's try this actually, see if it works. Um, skeleton mirror joint. What happens? So it mirrors in place, uh, but let's see. Let's duplicate this, and hopefully, if we've built everything, okay. No, that doesn't quite line up, but uh, let's see. I'm going to group this again inside of there. And point snap this group to the heel rig. 
So there's no reason this heal rig shouldn't work now. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to unparent that anyway because you're going to want to duplicate that foot group. But so now we have a mirrored foot rig. It should be the same orientations roughly as this rig because this side was mirrored from this side, and then we built that foot rig off of. Um, so make sure I get rid of this duplicate that I made. Um, built this foot rig based off of that leg. So the orientation should be the same, uh, but your directions may be different. So you know, like we had to do that reverse. Uh, multiply for the condition nodes. I'm not sure that you'd have to do it on this side, but you'll still have to hook up all your IK handles, you'll have to parent them under each other, um, all that stuff. But there, there are some tricks that you can use to mirror stuff, but you'll you'll have to play with it and see what works. Um, you, you, you see that you know I'm trying stuff, I'm like, oh right, I can't do that, and here's why. Uh, you know, as I looked at my foot rig, the errors were facing the wrong way, but I can do it this way. Okay, so I figured out a different way to do it. So, um, and if that doesn't work, just just rebuild it from scratch. But as much as you keep things symmetrical, you should, um, so you get consistent motions out of left and right. Um, so that's how to build your foot rig. Uh, there will be an example file here, and we'll go through uh, the rest of the rig as we keep going. So thanks for watching.